choose who you want to go first and go for it. Thank you uh, very much for this opportunity and I really feel um, that your heart is in the right place and that makes me feel some validation. It's very hard to do this. I'm not used to being the angry activist, <laughs> okay. Um, so I also want to first acknowledge the other people who came here to testify, who took days off from their jobs just because this is to be with you and, and us today. Please stand up. All of you who came here to testify who aren't getting the chance to testify, please stand up. Thank you for being here. I'm sorry that you're not getting this opportunity. I would like you to be in this chair with me. So our hearts together on this. Um, watching from the 16th floor the videotape of this, what was happening in this room before we came down, leaves me with some very mixed feelings. On the one hand, I'm very heartened by the people who are speaking up to protect funding for the libraries. But I'm also deeply disturbed by what I heard was the leadership up here. Um, when I heard Linda Johnson from Brooklyn Public Library speaking on the one hand saying that she wants money for the libraries and on the, her other hand saying that they don't have money to fix the air conditioning and are going to sell off the branches. And Tish James says to her, we have a Carnegie Library that we need to protect. And she says, come look at the plan that the developer has where we'll destroy that Carnegie Library, shrink the services. So I'm sorry, but there's a, there's a mixed agenda going on here and it's very demeaning. I mean, we see through it. And when Steve Levin said, said to her, you know, is Mayor Bloomberg, does he want these libraries or is he trying to get rid of them? Is he in favor of them? And they laughed. I'm sorry, it says it all. It's, it's deeply demeaning to us. It's very damaging that there are people in the leadership positions of these libraries whose hearts are not in the place of the libraries. And we're seeing it played out in the local level. Let me tell you what's happening. Josh Nakowitz, who is in this room, walking out of this room with Linda Johnson, is in charge of the Brooklyn Heights Library meetings where we are talking about what's going to happen with the Brooklyn Heights Library. Let me tell you what happened a month ago. He hosted a meeting at the Brooklyn Heights Library where he announced that they are going to close that library, they're going to sell that Art Deco historic library to a private developer. Then he said they were going to get rid of the business and career services and then he said they would sell the building to a private developer who would have a library on the first floor that will be one-fourth, one-fourth the size of the library now. Okay? Is everybody hearing this? I hear you. Decreasing space is decreasing opportunities. It's the same thing. And uh, my heart goes out to these librarians to John Islop, who's come to our meetings, they are working under horrible conditions by a leadership that doesn't have their heart in line with what they're supposed to be protecting. This is outrageous. We are giving away tremendous real estate so that a few people who are connected to Bloomberg via Linda Johnson and Josh Nackwitz, who's chairing these meetings, so that they can get more and more and more. And they can, at the same time, decrease, decrease, decrease with every shrinkage, with every foot loss. They are decreasing opportunities for the public to learn and to grow. The libraries are the least expensive way for the public to learn and to get a foothold in this society. The least expensive. They are less than 1% of this city budget. Um, if I could uh, just uh, um, interject. We are going on a three minute time clock, but we let you okay. go over because obviously you feel very passionate and I, I, I appreciate that passion, I do. Um, uh, so I just want to remind uh, the other uh, speakers um, uh, from here on in uh, when you hear that uh, clock you're supposed to stop talking, but um, <laughs> uh, um, uh, but I understand you feel very strongly about this. Um, so I uh, uh, just want to be respectful 
and allow you uh, uh, your time. And I know you're speaking on behalf of uh, all these other folks here. So thank you um, very much. And um, whoever you want to go next. <coughs> um, I did notice that you just turned on the three minute clock. Um, do we want a shrinking library system for a growing wealthier cityer, city? Because that's what we're going to get as the principal purpose of the library system becomes the generation of real estate deals for developers. The new citywide policy has, in a very harmful way, turned into a perverse incentive for the city to, to fund libraries and drive them into the ground. That libraries are underfunded is without doubt. Most people, more people visited public libraries in New York than every other major sports team and every other major cultural event combined. The funding of libraries is one of the highest priorities of the community boards. And yet libraries do not receive funding anything like, for instance, the massive subsidies we channel the Yankee Stadium and the so-called Barclays, Bruce Ratner, Mikhail Prokhorov arena. <coughs> With all due respect, and I will leave it to you to decide how much respect is due, the process of the annual funding dance for libraries in this city is a farce. That cannot be allowed to go on for more than even one more year. In noticing New York, I have lifted the veil. We know that insiders are referring to this process as dwarf tossing. We're all the dwarfs, everyone in this room. Libraries are the little guys. They are the pittance that should be easy to include in the city budget, especially given the m that the money goes so far since the libraries are used so well. Everyone will care about libraries as their funding fate is cruelly tossed around in an annual battle that serves as a political distraction. The political theater is that the big bag mayor makes the li cuts the libraries and in the end the city council borough presidents ride in like heroes with discretionary funds to make up some, but only some of the cuts. In the end, we are funding our well-used libraries at such a low level we keep them open even less than Detroit, a city on the verge of bankruptcy. Meanwhile, the mayor is getting what he wants. Low funding is being used as an excuse to push the system's valuable assets out the door to real estate developers. In crony capitalism abuse, you're essentially funding the asset stripping by the mayor. The greatest shame of underfunding the libraries in order to create real estate deals is that even if it shakes loose a few deals, just a few every year, it's an utter travesty to continually drive all the libraries and the entire system into the ground financially. Thank you very much. You came in under time. <laughs> I timed it well. Usually it's um, I'm used to the three minute <laughs> limit. I actually uh, had a moment to, uh, uh, I, I could slow down and uh, <laughs> usually I try and fit in too much information, but you know, we divided our testimony up and you're only hearing a very small fraction of it. The, the rest of it's going to be on the web and uh, you'll have uh, physical copies of it. Sure. Uh, uh, thank you. I understand um, uh, the, the constraints that you've uh, testified under and, and um, uh, uh, Again, I appreciate your uh, very strong feelings on this, and you'll be the last and third, or third and last? Uh, a very difficult place to be. Um, I, I can't say it better than Carolyn or Michael has. Um, but I, I, everybody here Wanna has... Want to put a the mic a little bit closer? Yeah, so everybody okay. here has a personal story. In 1973, my husband was contemplating a career, and he spent every night and every day at the business library at Cadman Plaza in Brooklyn Heights. He read every periodical and, and book in his field. Forty years later, um, his successful advertising agency is responsible for launching such iconic brands as Haagen-Dazs and Snapple and many other companies. Everybody have a, has a story here if they were a child or an adult. Libraries are the pebbles that create the waves that become the engines of commerce. To take them down on the short-term thinking of real estate deals is a travesty. Um, closing this one branch uh, will close forever those bootstrap companies, the pluck of entrepreneurs that have really created this city and will create it in the future. We need a cooling off period. 
we need to stop and really think about what we're doing. These are short-term solutions. And frankly, cooling off is, is kind of the operative word because every time a library is considered um, to be closed, it seems that the cooling systems are not working. I mean, it seems so ridiculous, but mm -hmm. the reason the Donald uh, Library needed to be closed and, s and, and, s and and sold and shrunk, an air conditioning problem, the, the, the demolishing the historic research book stack at Tilden, again, an air conditioning problem, need to sell off the Brooklyn Bright, uh, branch, mm -hmm. huh, an air conditioning problem. Um, sell the Pacific branch, an air conditioning problem. Same. All these air conditioning problems are a problem for all of us. It's a problem for our future. We, w we are asking that there be a cooling off period, that you actually have an audit, an, a moratorium and an yes. audit of all of these air conditioning problems. It seems so simple, but everybody has a simple story here and what the libraries have meant to them. So let's take this simple problem of air conditioning and let's <laughs> fix it so that we can save these buildings. It's, it's just really ironic. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, I, and I want to close by saying if you're really looking for some more money, why don't we just shut down the EDC? You know, my husband's <laughs> business, well, honestly, it's just like ridiculous because $100 million, just $100 million, which is what these guys were saying that they needed just to get them through this year, $100 million was given by the EDC to Fresh Direct. Okay, that's one company. Think of all the entrepreneurs and all the pluck of all those entrepreneurs if we kept all the libraries open as opposed to one company. Certainly, the tax revenue generated from all those companies would be far greater than the one that has been given the money from the EDC. And I've saved you 16, 16 seconds, too. 13, 12, 10. <laughs> we're either moving towards a more caring society or we're moving away from it. If we follow the leadership in selling off these branches, we're moving away from a caring society. Um. Yeah. Um, thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much um, uh, for uh, for coming out here today for waiting. Uh, I know it was a long um, wait, and uh, um, you know I think that uh, um, as as chair of the Cultural Affairs and Libraries Committee, um, you know we'll. We'll take everything that you've said and, and go back and talk to uh, the systems. It, it affects not just the Brooklyn Public Library system, obviously, um, as our next panel will uh, uh, speak to. And um, uh, I can say to you that probably like everyone else in this room, right, my uh, life would be very different if it were not for uh, the Broadway branch of the Queens Public Library system uh, in Astoria, um, and uh, you probably heard me say, obviously we did not have a lot of money, I'm one of eight children, uh, but we had the public library, and uh, uh, I was the first person in my family to go to college, and, and now I'm uh, uh, a city council member and chair of the committee uh, that I once wrote testimony for. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, it's something I appreciate, and I very, very much appreciate uh, uh, everything you said and, and we, we really do need to uh, be able to get to a place where we can invest in and fix air conditioning units.